you, if I click on the green um, flag, you will see that I have cloned, I have created five copies of the original object several times. Now we're going to learn how to do this. Instead of having to draw a sprite again and again, cloning allows you to create a copies of the object and it also allows whatever you have programmed that object to do to be passed on to the cloned object as well. Now this will help you create a cool effect that I'm about to show you. Um, so it's a building block to get to that effect. Have a look at this cool effect. To get this effect. Join me and let's find out how to clone. Okay, so let's start by creating a simple clone. New, um, replace contents of the current project. Okay, and I've got my new project. Now, usually you start with my friend here, Mr. Sprite One, but we were going to start with a ball. So I would like you to go into your choose a sprite, go up to choose a sprite and click. And what we're looking for is this lovely little ball here, right at the top. Click on it and it appears inside the um, the runtime area, the, the um, stage where you will see what happens to your project. Click on the other sprite and this little delete button, click it to get rid of the old one. So all you have right now is the ball. It's in there nicely. So how do we create a clone of that ball? All we simply need to do is to go into, I think it is control, I may be wrong. Yes. And you will notice down here three blocks. When I start as a clone, create a clone of myself and delete this clone. So what we're going to do is we need to pull um, create a clone of myself. And what we're going to do is simply on start when the green flag is clicked, we want to create a clone of itself. That's all first stage. That's all we're doing. So how does that work? Click the green flag. Hmm, nothing happens. Stop, start again, click the green flag. Nothing happens. Actually, that's not true. Something has happened, but they're all there sitting on top of each other. And the way to check that is click on the first ball. There's the one and there's the other. So it has created a clone of itself. So when I click create a clone of myself, it has. Click the stop. Let's see if that happens again. So what I'd like us to do is just do it 10 times. No, five times. So when I click the green flag, change, uh, pull in the repeat code. Put in a 5 where it says 10, delete the 10 and put in a 5. Oops, my numbers lock is not working. My keyboard's not working. Give me a second. Hold on. Okay, so where you had a 10, 10 was originally there. You delete the 10 and you put in a 5. Now let's see what happens. Stop and play. Again, nothing appears to happen, but it actually has happened. It should have created five clones of itself. So, but they are all created on top of the original. So let's have a look. Are there five? One, two, three, four, five. And the original, that makes six. So that's how you create a clone. Now I'm sure most of you are thinking, so how's that useful? It is useful, but we have to add a little bit more bizazz to this for it to work well. So let's try and make it something similar to what I showed you before, which is basically whereby you will have them all in a row. So let's try and do that. Okay. So we're going to add some more codes. Stop the code. Now this time, yes, we want it to create a, cl a clone of itself, but what we want it to do now is let's offset them. Let's move them slightly off from one another. So here we're going to need some motion blocks. And what we want to do is every time they appear, we want it to change X by, by, by 10 or 20. So create a clone and then offset it by 20 or by 10. Let's try, let's have a look at offsetting it by 20. So change the 10 in the change X by to 20. Stop it and run it. Let's have a look. So we've still got our original here. We better put it in the middle just in case. Stop and start. Oh, that's pretty cool. So what it's doing is it's moving X towards the right and it's created an effect of one and you can separate them to three, four, five and the original six. 
So it's done it again. I would like some spaces in between them. So I am going to guesstimate a bigger amount, but this time I'm going to put a minus. Let's see what effect that has. I'm going to start my clone. Stop it. I'm going to start my clone over there. And then this time I'd like for it to change X by minus 60. And we're going to put a minus in front to ensure that it goes the other way. Okay, so let's have a look at that effect. Stop, start. Oh, wow. Now it's nicely spaced out, one after the other after the other. And that's the first row. And that is what creating um, a clone of myself can do.